Okay, this is your review for your fall semester exam. You should have been given one of these review packets uh, this week. So, number one, a coordinate grid is shown below. Which order pair describes the point that is located four units to the left of the origin and two units below the x-axis? The origin is zero, zero, right here in the middle. And I'm going to go four units to the left. One, two, three, four. That is, gives me at negative four. And then I am going to go two units below the x-axis. This is the x-axis. One, two. And this is at negative two. So my coordinate is negative four, negative two, which is G. Number two. An engine is operating at 25% full power of its full power. Which number line shows a point that represents 25%? So let's tell me what numbers represent 25%. I know one fourth represents 25%, and I know decimal two five represents 25%. So I am going to find the fraction of each one of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are broken up into tenths. So this is 1 tenth. This is 2 tenths. So this is representing 2 tenths. Let's see what percentage that is. Percent is always out of 100. So this is times 10, times 10, this is 20%. So, and I'm looking for 25, so I know this is not it. The next one is broken up in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is 1 8, this is 2 8, so two eighths. If I simplify two eighths, I get one fourth. All right, we just talked about that one fourth is 25%. So this is 25%. So my answer is G. But I want to do the next two just for practice. Because you never know. <coughs> I'm sorry. They might be asking for a different percent. So let's look at the next one. This is one, two, three, four, five. This is two fifths. Two fifths as a percentage. Percent is always out of 100. So how does five go to 100? times 20. So, so 2 times 20 is 40. So this represents 40%. The next one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's broken up into 12. And this one represents 1, 2, 3, four twelfths. When I simplify four twelfths, what do I get? One third. One third is one of those benchmark fractions that is easier to memorize. One third is what percentage? 33.3 percent. Memorize that one third is 33.3%. So are we ready for number three? 
Because our answer was G here, but we found all of the percentages. So here, which inequality represents all possible values of T? I'm going to rewrite it so I have room to solve. So I have a negative 250 to, I need to isolate my T. I need to isolate the T, so I need to get rid of this negative 250. So I'm going to add a positive 250. If I add a positive 250 on this side, I have to add a positive 250 on this side. So this gives me T is less than or equal to 600 plus 250. It's 850. 850. So I know it's not 350. No, it's not 350. Here's 850. But make sure your sign is correct. Don't make a careless mistake and pick the one that has the wrong sign. So my answer is... B. So number four, I am going to give you a big hint. This is like a question that you had on your CBA that several people missed. B, not because they did not know it, because they did not read carefully. Looking at the booklets, y'all have the answer right. Looking at your scantron, you have the answer wrong. So what coordinate is the X coordinate of P on the coordinate grid shown below? So here's P. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 6. And it was 2. This is X. This is y. My x coordinate is negative 6. So if it was a gridable, if it was a gridable, I would have a 6 right in front of my decimal. And I would bubble in the negative. It, the 6 will be right in front of the decimal, not after it, right in front of it. So make sure they, if you ask for x coordinate, they give, you give negative 6. What if they ask for the y coordinate? What would be? 2. two. Okay. Number 5. Which expression is represented on the number line? 1, 2, 3. Three, four. I have four groups of negative two. This can be written two different ways. So which this so this is four times negative two. What else which other way could it be written? Negative two times four. Negative two times four. So my answer is G. Does negative 2 times 4 give me negative 8? Yes. Okay, on this next one, number 6. I like, we're going to talk about the uh, temperature. I like to kind of draw a number line to represent the thermometer. Like a temperature gauge. I have 0 here, and they keep going up. A mercury has a freezing point of negative 38. So this is negative 38, way down here. Water has a freezing point of positive 32. Positive 32. What is the difference? The difference is the distance between these two. How do we go from 38 to 0? 38 points, right? How do we go from 0 to 32? 32. So when we combine these, 32 plus 38, 
I get 70. So number seven, order the decimal values in descending order from greatest to least. Oh, it tells you from greatest to least. You need to know, though, that descending is greatest to le least. And just a note here, ascending is least to greatest. When you have a number line, you have zero. Here is your small, and this side is your biggest. It goes from small to big. We are going to the greatest numbers. So I know I can get rid of my negative numbers because those are not the greatest. So if I think of a number line, though, I have my positives. I know that I have my positives. But then what happens with the negatives? I'm going to start off with 1.9, and then they it looks like they get bigger. But remember, the more you go this way, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So the numbers look like they're increasing, but they have negatives. So here I have 1, 2, 4. Here I have 4, 2, 1. The, it, my number line doesn't go 4, 2, 1. It goes 1, 2, 4, right? So that leaves out D, and so my answer is B. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time to fill this out. I'll give you about a minute. I'll stop the recording and give you time to fill it out, and then I'll start it again, and we will check it. Okay, so I can make my fraction go to 100. 5 times 100 is 20. 1 times 20 is 20, so I know this is 20%. It is also 0 0.2 because I move the decimal 1, 2. Or this is 20 hundredths. This is, I move my decimal two times, 25%. And I know 25% is 1 fourth. 50%, an easy one, 0.5 and 1 half. This is just going to be 1, and the percent is going to be a 100%. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So which expression is equivalent to 4x plus 10? 4 times x plus 10. Remember, I distribute that 4 to everything that's inside. This is 4 times everything that's inside the parentheses. 4 times x is 4x plus 4 times 10, which is 40. So I have 4x plus 40. It's not this one. It's not this one. It is C. Number 10. There is a clear distinction between expression and equations. Which of the following can be written, written as an equation? Remember, equations have the equal sign. When you have the word is, that means it is equal to. 5 less than 27 times. This is an expression. 
3n plus 15. This is an expression. Because it's 3n plus 15. C, 2 times j, so 2 times j minus 10 is 32. This is your equation. 5 is less than 4 times x. Okay. So what is the difference between an expression and an equation? Okay, so basically an equal sign. The table shown shows the amounts of drivers education courses. I'm sorry. Now, the table shows the amount of driver education course that several individuals have completed. List the amounts from greatest to least. So you can do one of two things. You can put them all in the same format is the easiest way. Sometimes it's easy just to put them all as percentages or all as decimals. So on here I have 75. So I know this is 75%. And I already have 60%. Two-thirds, I know, is 2 divided by 3, and that's 6. I'm going to get a repeating 6. So this is 66.6%. 7 twelfths. 7 divided by 12. I'm going to add a decimal on, add a zero on. 12 will go into 70 how many times? Five times. Five times 12, 60. So far, this is 0. 0.5 something, 0. 0.58. So this is 0. 0.58. So I know this is 58%. We wanted the greatest. So far, 75% is the greatest. And it is decimal 75. So I know it's not these three. So that leaves me with A. A. <laughs> Number 12, a group of 400 people were surveyed about their favorite season of the year. The results show that 96 people chose winter as their favorite season. What percentage of the survey participant chose winter as their favorite season? So 96 out of 400. What is this as a percentage? I know percentage is always out of what? 100. So let's see if we can do this. Can I go 400 to 100? Divide by 4. Can I do 96 divided by 4? 96 divided by 4. Twenty-four. So twenty-four goes here. So what percentage would that be? Twenty-four percent. So number thirteen. Jake is going to multiply a number by num the number ten by a fraction. So let's think about it. Maybe ten times one third, or ten 
times two fifths. Which of the following can be true? The product may be greater or greater or less than ten. So let's see, if we did ten times half. This is going to be 10 over 1 times 1 over 2. 10 over 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So remember, when you are multiplying by a fraction, it is going to be less than this number. Anytime you're multiplying by a fraction, something less than zero, less than one, your number is going to be smaller. When you are mu multiplying by less than one, you get a smaller number. So the answer is B. So number 14. Over spring break, 15% of Miss McDonald's students went on a family vacation. Which percent bar represents a portion of Miss McDonald's students that went on a vacation? So let's look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can take each one of these maybe as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So each one of these can be 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50%, we want 15. So this is the same thing, 10, 20, 25, and we want 15. Is this 15%? That's way, 10, 20, 30, 40. Here is 10, and then here's half of 10. So my answer is... is D. Now number 15. Prime factorization. Prime numbers. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 9, uh, 9, not 9. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. They only have one factor. So with 75, what two numbers can I break down 75? 25 times 3. 3 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. Now I want to break down 25. 5 times 5. So my prime factorization is 3 times 5 times 5. So this is going to be 3 times 5 squared, which gives me C. Dina lives 24.5 miles from the nearest mall. Beth lives 2.5 times the distance from the mall than Christina does. How many miles does Beth live? So, from the mall. From the mall. So how much, she lives two and a half this. So 2.4.5 times two and a half. How do I put two and a half as a decimal? 2.5. So I'm going to multiply these. 5 times 5 is 5, carry my 2. 5 times 4 is plus 2, 
22. 5 times 2 is 10. 12. I add my 0 under here. 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to carry my 1. 2 times 4 is 8. Plus 1 is 2 times 2 is 4. Now I can add 5, 2, 9, 10, 11. Carry my 1. 6. I have two numbers after my decimal. So I have to have two numbers after my decimal. So my answer is... Number 17. The shaded portion of the grid represents the area Freddy's rectangular bathroom floor that has been, been mopped. Each square on the grid has the same dimension. What percentage What percentage of the floor has of Freddy's floor has been mopped? So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So out of 25, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13 has been mopped. Does everybody agree with that? 13 out of 25 has been mopped? Yes. We want to know what percentage this is. So I go to 100 times 4 because 12, we percentage is always out of 100. 25 times 4 is 100. 13 times 4, 52. So 52 percentage has been mopped. What has not been mopped? You can do 100 minus 52. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 5 is 4. So 48 has not been mocked. The account balances of Miss Smith's Four children's bank accounts are shown below. What is the combined total of the four accounts? So we're going to add all these together. I want to take the negatives first. Jill and Theo both owe money. So negative 7 and negative 8 is negative 15. Liz and Jay are doing pretty good. 23 and 10. So they have a positive 33. So I have a 33 and a negative 15. 33 plus negative 15. I subtract these. So what's 33 minus 15? Thirteen minus five. Eight. Two minus one. One. So my answer is eighteen. Yes, yeah, so there the account balance they all together would be eighteen dollars. So, which graphic organizer correctly classifies the following set of numbers? So, I'm going to look at each one of them. I know 12 over 3 is 12 divided by 3, which is 4. Then I have 6, 12 divided by 5. There's nothing I can do with that, right? Uh, it cannot be... So let's look. Negative 10 is a integer. A has it in a whole number. 
Remember, integer uh, whole numbers, no negative, and no fractions, and no decimal. So let's look at this one. 12 over 5, 1 fifth, and remember, integers, no decimals, and no fractions. So far, number B looks good. Rational numbers. Well, this we just said was 4. So I know it cannot be this one because 4 should be in a whole number. Here we have negative 10, and it says in a whole number, and I know negatives cannot be here. So that leaves me with B. So on this problem, x over 6, negative 12. I'm going to multiply by 6 on this side because this is division. I'm going to multiply by 6 on this side. This leaves me with x is greater than or equal to negative 12 times 6. Negative 12 times 6 is... Negative 72. I know that this means closed circle. So I can automatically take this one out and this one out. So this gives me negative 2. I know it's not negative 2 because I just solved it. Guys, if you're not sure, though, put it back in. Does negative 2 divided by 6 equal anywhere between negative 12? No. no, so I know it's not that one. So my answer is A. A. Number 21. Aaron wants to cut a length of rope that measures seven eighths long in two pieces of one sixteenth feet long. Aaron will use the expression seven eighths divided by one sixteenth to calculate the number of pieces he will cut, be able to cut. Which other expressions could he use? I know when I am dividing, I multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to be 7 eighths times 16 over 1. So could it be A? 8 sevenths? No, because no, this one is flipped. 7 eighths times 16 over 1? Yes. yes. And this one cannot because they flip this first one is the reciprocal. And you, the reciprocal is the second one. Which expression does not represent 2 fifths? This is 2 divided by 5. 2 divided by 5. Top number goes in the house. So 2 divided by 5 is correct. So I don't want this one because it's wanting a not. 2 divided by 5, that is correct. 2 in the house, 5 on the outside is correct. So my answer is D. Number 23, 
This is one, two, three. Three X equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I am going to divide by three, divide by three, because this is multiply. The inverse to multiply is divide. So x equals nine divided by three is three. So the answer is A. Number 24, 12n equals nine. To solve this, I'm going to divide this side by 12 and this side by 12. N equals 9 divided by 12. I can simplify this because it looks like all of these are fractions. What can I divide 9 and 12 both by? 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so my answer is 4. So which expression is equivalent to the following expression? Plus, plus. So I know it can't be this because these are multiplied. 5 times 6, am I doing 5 times 6 here? No. Am I doing anything with it dividing by 2? No. So the answer is 26. Uh, Lionel is 48% through the novel. He is reading on his device. Which fraction represents the portion of has finished reading? So he has 48% done. So 48 over 100. I want this as a fraction. What can I divide both of these by? Can I divide by a bigger number than 2? Look, these bottom numbers look like 25. Can I make 100 go to 25? Divide by 4. So I divide by 4. 48 divided by 4 is... 12. So my answer is B. B. Number 27. Heidi has 38 pieces of candy. She ate three pieces every day. Then she found more, at, oh, okay, more candy, which she divided equally between her friends. And three assemblies. The following expressions can be used to find the number of pink candy pieces. So they're telling you we're going to use this. So I'm going to rewrite it. 38 minus 3 times 5 plus 8 divided by 4. So using this expression, I'm going to use order of operations. Do we have any grouping? Do we have any uh, exponents? Nope. Multiply or divide? Yes. So I'm going to start reading it. As soon as I have a multiplication, I'm going to do. I'm going to solve that. Thirty-eight minus three times five, yes. which is fifteen. And I brought everything else down. Do I have any more division? So 8 divided by 4 is 2. Everything else comes down. Now I'm the add and subtract. So I have 38 minus 15. What's 38 minus 15? 23 plus 2, 25. Okay, so please study. You have your test next week. Okay, what day?